speaker on. There we are. I can hear you a bit better now. Yeah, how, how was your weekend? It was good. Um, not quite as much quite cinema much as cinema. planned, but I went over to a friend's yesterday, which was really good because I hadn't seen her for a long time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, have you been... Oh. What what have you been up to? I've clocked a little bit of um, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, research. Yeah, well, I mean, um, that something like that should have happened hasn't really come as a great surprise. Um, and I mean, when we last spoke, we were talking about the repo spike in 2019. When lo and behold, the precursor to another repo spike has been identified. In fact, it was uh, it was identified by a guy called John Titus on the 14th of February this year. Um, the Fed released uh, a number of economic indicators, one of which was the um, losses being carried forward in the accounts of uh, American commercial banks. Um, and it's losses from those bond holdings which uh, have caused F- SPV to become insolvent. Uh, but John Titus's video actually shows, um, where his analysis shows that, uh, in fact, probably all banks are um, now insolvent at this stage um, due to a simple fact. Um, the lower the yield on a security, the higher the price. It's an inverse um, multiplier. So, for instance, sure. a yield of 10% um, suggests the capitalization rate of um, 10, 10 times. Uh, what 1 over 10%, is it right? Um, and a capitalization rate of 1%. Um, denotes a multiplier of 100 times. So if you put rates up from um, 1% to 10%, the value of the thing um, drops from 100 to 10, right? It's a huge drop. When it was working the other way around, it's the same thing. But effectively, um, the bank balance sheets with raising interest rates, with the amount of bonds um, which are being held by commercial banks as part of their capital security requirements, have actually rendered them in- insolvent at a basic level. Right now, um, so. so Pushing up interest rates as a policy tool um, has side effects as well as cause and effect to what it's, you know, what they're supposed to be doing. Oh, let's put up interest rates and cool off the housing market. Let's put up interest rates and that will take demand out of the economy and inflation will fall, right? These are, so they're very simplistic um, understandings of what the actual effect of these things are. Um, but um, the, the the wider effects of them are lesser well known, uh, and and you you have to assume that they're as well known to the central bankers that use these uh, tools um, as a, 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 as other people who also know what the side effects are, right? Um, now, uh, so that then beg, begs the question, which John Titus did ask on. Um, the 14th of February, the title of his thing was, why is the Federal Reserve uh, sabotaging the economy? Right. That, that's that. That's what he said. Um, and it's a really good question. Now, another question which William Engdahl asked um, last year was, why, why are NATO com- countries committing her a Harry Carey with their own energy policies? Right. So. Here you've got two um, <laughs> two of the key parts of, of, of how the economy works, okay, 
being sabotaged at the same time, right? Now, so there's a crisis. Now, in that crisis, we all know you don't let a good crisis go to waste. And so what is the oven ready policy, like Boris's oven ready Brexit or whatever, you know, what what are the oven ready policies which are being, you know, they want to deal out? Well, I think it's hard hard is in the mix, right? But what's funny? <laughs> no, I just love it. I love it. It's the first time in ages that we've had this. I'm keeping my mouth, my mouth shut. Please carry on. I'm loving it. So, uh, a number of things have, uh, are, are, are coming to a head. The peak everything bubble bursting, okay? <laughs> and it's not an act of God or something. Like, it's a controlled demolition. <laughs> okay? that, that's, that, that's, that's the point. So why is the Federal Reserve provoking a financial crisis? <coughs> Question, right? Um, what is its oven ready solution? Well, central bank digital currencies, um, some sort of rationing system of carbon, you see. So, um, so uh, this morning I've done a blog pulling these two strands together um, and then my theory about the ratio of good carbon to bad carbon the 16 to 1 I mean I, I, um, I, I haven't heard that before I always thought when yeah, you said, 16, I, I mean, I, I, when you I, said I, 16 to 1 I assumed that you were talking about um, you know, the ratio of uh, gold to uh, you know money in a falling yeah, empire by metallism, is, is that what you meant yeah yeah this is the point it, it, it's, it's an analog of that and, and um that ratio um the historic arbitrage between east and west which you, you know stephen Zarl Enger wrote a lot about that so, so, so did alexander del mar uh first um so there's the uh So people like Chris Martinson, who really gets on my nerves, so he's peak prosperity and he's basically a peak oiler. And there's been a, I, I, you might have noticed I've been blogging a lot about peak oil lately. Um, not just because that's some new concept to me, it's just that it's, it, it's, it's baked into the, um, it's just baked into the, um, the oven made, the oven ready solution that's due to be trotted out now the other thing i sent to you today which made me laugh was um the bbc with spv bank apparently a bank called the Lon the bank of london you know who i've never heard of are supposed to be making a bid to buy the uk branch of it and who's a non-exec director of the bank of england peter mandelson i mean you couldn't make this shit up now um so effectively um the oven ready solution to these you know uh, to, to this cacistocracy um catastrophe uh, economics it, it is that um the fascist financialized state will pick over the corpses of, 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 of those it decides to send to the wall and um, you know and various iconoclastic score settling will take place uh I, it's uh, yeah I, I think I read I think I read on the Guardian that HSBC are buying it well, the Guardian might have said that on the BBC website, a bid apparently was made by this Bank of London thing. Right. I think that right. I think the HSBC thing. I can't remember if it said it had actually agreed it, uh, or if it was bidding. I can't remember. But that was that was about half an hour ago. Maybe they're talking about the 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 US book. This was specific. No, it was the UK, UK book. It was the UK this. book. Yeah. Um, I, I and, and it could be either. I mean, you know the yeah the, sure. The um, the regulators are, who have gone in and taken control 
In fact, I'm not sure whether that's a chapter 11 type of process. I, I mean, the other thing is, Ranjan, as well, we've been here before with Green Seal Capital as well. Uh, uh, and people forget, you know, people forget Green Seal Capital, David Cameron, uh, the, the cronyism, the revolving doorism of all of this. Um, and then, the, uh, and so Mark Carney is going to put his head above the parapet again. Um, and it's, you know, so all the ESG stuff. So anyway, um, the John Titus stuff is worth looking at. He gave a long talk. There was a going direct um, symposium online, um, which uh, Taylor Hudak um, hosted. Uh, what, talking Richard about BlackRock? Black you mean talking about BlackRock? Yeah, Black about BlackRock. And the first guy that spoke was this guy called um, uh, John Titus. And I, uh, yeah, so I, I know. Oh, well, so those guys are doing really good stuff. I'm really impressed. Uh, well, I mean, there are a lot of people that have done a lot of good work on all of this stuff. You just have to remember where you've seen it before um, to join up all the dots. Uh, um, like Ian Davis's thing on Off Guardian um, about the central bank digital currencies. I, I, I'm really looking forward to part two on that. Um, but the 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 what happened? What what you see in your news feed, however alternative media you think it is, okay, uh, is influenced by the Google algorithms because new Google is something like ninety three percent of all searches on the internet are done through Google, and those will affect you know if you use DuckGo Go, that will still be affected by what happens on Google. Right, it's it, it, it's overwhelming. The same with YouTube. Um, it, you know, the uh, like I use BitChute um, as well, and people use Odyssey, and people use Rumble. They're, they're, these things and their algorithms for uh, you can't get away from from the influence of Google now on search. You, you can't get it. Doesn't make any sense to even think you can. Um, and 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 then, even if you did find something independently, if you want to discuss it, you're going to be discussing it with people who, who, who are intrinsically swimming in Google algorithms. We're we're swimming in Google, you know that, and it's influencing our thought and what we think we know, right? So, how do you get away from that? Well, you have to read books. You have to go to the library, and you have to get you have to get up. You have to get out and about, socialise, and talk to things without your phone handy. Um, now, on on that subject, may I just point out two things that um, are just right here. Firstly, is that right? Mm -hmm. By the way, yeah. yeah. Um, firstly, um, I found this book about I. F. Stone uh, called American Radical. I don't suppose biographies of I.F. Stone come out that frequently. Um, apparently, he went out of fashion in the 40s, came back into fashion in the late 60s and then did the trial of Socrates. Mm -hmm. um, so this book is called American Radical Life and Times of I.F. Stone by somebody called D.D. Guttenplan, who I believe is an American chap who was London correspondent for The Nation and now is the editor of The Nation. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, I read the beginning of it. It's brilliant. The way in which it sets up this scene in the early 40s, I.F. Stone, who had quite a lot of access when he was in his late 20s. Um, mm -hmm. And then it makes it sound as though in the early 40s, there's a conversation about universal health care happening in America. Um, mm -hmm. Same sort of time as the NHS conversation is happening. And I think the medical industry just basically said this man is a communist i think there's that that thing where um in, in america if somebody says i believe every american deserves the best health care everybody stands up and says absolutely you know and bows down to the flag but then they find a way of saying but actually and then they deviate from it so um that's quite interesting in terms of argument and then yesterday i found you know how I quite like Frank Zappa. 
Mm. I don't really listen to Frank Zappa very much anymore, but I've listened to him a lot. Well, the Center for Policy Studies, which, as you can imagine, uh, just conceptually induces vomit uh, mm. from my side of the of the table. I saw a spine that looked like that. Mm. And at the spine, it said, the poodle bites back. I don't know if you can see that. Poodle bites back. The poodle bites back. Okay. Mm. Um, having listened to Frank Zappa from the age of about 15, um, there is an album called Apostrophe uh, in which he makes references to poodles performing certain types of acts. Mm. Uh, it's quite it's quite funny. Uh, but one of the lines is, you know, the poodle bites, the poodle chews it. Anyway, um, it's Andrew Tyree who's written The Poodle Bites Back for the Centre for Policy Studies in the year 2015 after stepping down. Don't like that term. After you know, he was no longer the chair of the Treasury Select Committee. So this is mm. called The Poodle Bites Back, Select Committees and the Revival of Parliament. Andrew Tyree, forward by Alistair Darling, Centre for Policy Studies. The same Centre for Policy Studies that was created by Keith Joseph and um, the Richard uh, Sharp of the BBC. Okay. Comes from. I've had a quick look at it. It's brilliant. Um, obviously, it's going to be good because it's Andrew Tyree and he's not really a man who at the time was known for time wasting. So, okay. yeah, I know the second in... most viewed video on my YouTube channel is when he's Dominic. head of the Treasury Committee, when they call in um, uh, Cummings. Yes. Yeah, um, exactly. That's the same guy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because um, Cummings then said no to a couple of other committees, didn't he? Uh, or oh, so we, to the... Well, uh, it, it, there was. Um, they couldn't get. Um, Dr North on before Brexit and he came in after and Tyree sort of says oh you know well we've got you here now uh, because North has said all sorts of terrible things about it. it's very very funny um, but anyway I mean I, 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 I think that um, you know looking back on those things now it's quite interesting to see what's what what was said what wasn't said where we're at now okay um, the idea of Brexit, the idea of um, the election of Trump in 2016, Biden in 2020, the pandemic, the whole shooting match, you know, all of that, it all feeds into where we are now. And they're not separate events. They're not they're not just sure. disjointed things. that have, It's not stuff that's happened to us along the way. It's, it's stuff that's been done to set everything up for the oven ready um the oven ready solution now uh, you know and people like tyree um and uh uh mandelson keir starmer and what you and i did that funny thing when we were voicing over keir starmer a, 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 a yeah when they did parliament on a saturday during the withdrawal agreement yeah yeah so The it's the oven ready solutions that have been pushed constantly for the last 20 or 30 years that you need to be wary of because, you know, it, it, it you know, manufacturing consent. I mean, that that's that's what this is all about. We, we said that the other day and I mean, it does it does bear looking at. You know, um, you know, watch that film again, but also but do you, watch do you think, um, do you think... the shock doctrine. Um, you know that that's a very good good film as well, or, or shoot the messenger, which is the um, uh, old boiling frogs. Um, uh, you know, the ex translator sort of wrote whistleblower nine eleven. Sibyl Edmonds. Um, do you think? that there is anything to be gained from paying any attention to any of the select committees? Uh, well, I, I think the select com committees are, are better things to follow than the Houses of Parliament or Prime Minister's question time. I mean, you know, the, um, 
in some ways, I guess more showboating goes on because people get some footage of them being busy for their constituents or whatever. Um, but they're supposed to be scrutinising legislation. And as we are supposed to be a constitutionally sound, based in law, you know, policy or whatever, um, <clears throat> that process is very important. And so things like the Internet Harms Bill, which UK Column have been going on, I mean, well, you, you have to look at, you know, right, who's promoting it? What are they trying to do? What are they saying it's it's supposed to be doing? What are they... What, what what are the unpleasant side effects for us and the happy coincidences for them if they you know um if if very imprecise language is included in statute you know it becomes you know the, the you know the the um the hubris the whim of a, 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 a or, or, or of uh, a judge or someone with delegated powers of some sort uh, c can affect people in a tyrannical, tyrannical kind of way. And we're just, we really are at, you know, at this point, I mean, we've reached the denouement. I, I mean, we have to have reached the denouement because, frankly, things are so, so bloody bad. There's no oil in the engine, let alone, you know, fuel in the tank. You know, the, the engine is seizing up at the moment. You know, the, Roger, is, I like to call it. I like to call it the denudement. The denudement, very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that's another thing worth watching. Um, Russell Brand's of the Emperor's New Clothes, which was produced by Tim. Uh, oh, he's quite a famous filmmaker. Anyway, he 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 directed it, um, but it's a very good film, um, and it. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's worth watching now uh, because it's immediately after 2008. And so I think what's interesting about it, it was released by Sony or distributed by Sony and they don't promote it at all. I mean, I, I think it had a very limited uh, cinema release, um, but, but, you know, went directly rather than direct to dvd it went direct to room 101 <laughs> <laughs> oh roger your cynicism really you are awful roger oh yes yeah there uh, we are uh what was i going to say I am, um, I am. tonight it may well be that i head in the general direction of the river because at king's college there is a talk about algorithms in our daily lives, which is to be delivered by the law professor who came up with the term in collaboration with the economics professor Richard Thaler, who won the Nobel Prize, nudge Cass Sunstein, who, by the way, his wife, so this is all, you know, behavioural, you know, behavioural insights, all this type of thing. Nudge. <coughs> Libertarian paternalism, I think they'd like to call it. Anyway, this is nearly 20 years later. He's doing a talk on algorithms. I found out the other day that, so he was he was in charge of regulation for Obama for a bit, and uh, like early. And um, his wife, I think, is a woman called Samantha Power. And I've noticed that she's very high up at USAID. And is very much, um, yeah. You know when? Do you, do you remember how there was that video of Biden talking about withholding one billion from Ukraine at one point? You know, unless they did. You know, I think he said, "Son of a bitch." You know, unless they did what they were told. This is when he was vice president, um, and people said, oh, "You were talking in public about, you know, making Ukraine do this in relation, you know." In, because, you know, people gave Trump shit for that. But Trump, I think, afterwards, he said, I always gave him the money. I never, I never, you know, held the money back or whatever. But anyway, um, I think Samantha Power is part of all of that. 
going to she's visit on her Twitter account. You can see her visiting these different countries and, you know, Hold on. with, yeah. you know, just <laughs> deciding what's what. So I might go and see him speak, even though obviously that is. <laughs> that's, it's about as staged as it as, as it gets. But at the same time, he's a legal theorist. This guy releases a book almost every six months. Mm -hmm. so so I'm just looking at the markets the markets what you mean uh, Silicon Valley and everything well no well London opened um and it's it's only down one percent um European markets I'd be expecting to see the euro getting a right caning um but yeah I, I mean obviously it's the um the trust it's good you know there's the, the 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 dip team or whatever which means they've got to go in and they try to bolster the market for so long and and what have what, you you mean this is the this is the central bank or yeah um yeah oh, well, early, no, just on, just on the bbc i'll have to have a look on trading oh, yeah, I'll have to let's have a look what's happening on trading economics going in to stabilize everything Yeah, it says HSBC by Silicon Valley's bank UK business for one pound. HSBC have bought it, have they? Yeah, for one pound. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. yeah okay well I'm, it's going to be an interesting week because it's the budget later this week the, the uh bank of england are going to announce its interest rate thing uh and there's some data i've been waiting for quite a long time um which is due out as well on uh, mortgage lending and um also i think the i think i've got to wait till the 23rd for the land registry figures um on on volumes in in the housing market and stuff but it's going to be a it, it it's it's a busy week i mean i i i um i've been sat on my hands uh waiting to see what what the outturn is based on what I've been seeing in raw data, which has been an absolute, it, it, it's a mess out there. It really is. Um, and my view has been if, if, if rates are raised further um, or even left where they are for too long without something else being thrown into the mix, we're looking at a real meltdown as it is. I don't you know, it's too late to to have anything other than a uh, an uncertain landing in terms of whether we land the right way up or not. So, you know, the, which tends to donate, we're not having a soft landing. Um, and uh, but but. All of that stuff is coming to a head at the moment. So so the fact that what happened with. Um, Silicon Bank last week which has been on the cards since the fed data came out 14 february um but every, you see everybody's catching up or pretending that they're on top of this stuff people like martinson well martinson um his last live update was still talking about the lab leak and all of this sort of thing and he sort of says oh well it's no surprise to us that know about energy and all this. They always say this. Is Mark um, an energy guy? Actually, yeah, it was a fucking surprise to him. If you read the Weekly Spooks article, it says he's always, every year, he's sort of saying, oh, well, Armageddon, Armageddon. You know, Who a, is a, a wrong clock is right twice a day. Who is Martinson? What? Who is Martinson? I can't hear you. It's 
Can you hear me now? Who is Martinson? Chris Martinson, Crash Course. Okay. He did a, it's very influential, came out in about 2009, 2010. He's a, an advocate of the peak oil theory still uh, and talks about um, basically system collapse based on um, running out of energy and all this sort of thing. So I, I, I've got to say, I, I find him intensely annoying. I, I don't like him at all. Um, and and I forced myself to watch his update and I did watch the lab leak one as well. And the, he, he really makes me cringe. He's, uh, um, crash course is a very good framework of understanding, right? So the crash course is worth watching, okay? Um, but it's, it's not right about everything. It's just a good framework of understanding. Um, and it perpetuates a few myths which are I think highly appropriate to the oven ready um, solution, i.e. Ardha, Ardha for white people <laughs> uh, is, 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 is what we're talking about here. Um, mm. So, yeah, let me, I, I'm going to read you this George Orwell bit from his, his not counting brown people book. Um, You know, you, you, you've had your 1930s guy that you, you mentioned just now. Um, I.F. Stone. Yeah. Stone. I.F. Stone. Um, where are we? Let's just uh, uh, see if I can find it. I mean, it's. Uh, so you have to excuse me for laughing because. The thing is, when you were introing everything, Roger, it was you were able to do one word here, one word there, which for, for things that represent huge events, and it was all coming together. And um, yeah, it's just collapse, 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 collapse. But I suppose, you know, what you one of the things I wanted to say to you whilst you were speaking as well was um, that. The effect of rising interest rates apparently is not a massive secret, you know, that there is an impact. And uh, well, obviously, there's a, an alleged impact. It's just that some of the impacts are occulted, as it were, um, and not and not spoken about. But because it they come as a surprise to other people what i'm saying is really don't 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 think like martinson keeps referring to everything as clown world now um that's something that john titus does and, and admittedly it is hard not to do i mean i i, I um uh but the Criminality and stupidity. I mean, there's that very. I mean, I've got the clip from the, the Big Short. You know, tell me the difference between criminality and stupidity, and I'll get my brother-in-law arrested. That one. Um, uh, it's they. They're doing these things criminally, not because they're stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. That's that's the point. But we're we're sold a story that they're doing something. They're not doing what it says on the tin. And if you're not a psychopath, that's really hard to understand because, you know, our minds aren't wired like these Machiavellian psycho minds, these Machiavellian psycho algorithmic um minds you know uh, that's that that that's that's the point uh, but anyway look here we are look so this is um from george orwell's not counting the n-word right um right so this is a uh, a criticism of a uh uh 
European Union book by a guy called Streit that came out in the 1930s as a as a response to Hitler. Um, he also wrote uh, an essay about um, <clears throat> oh god um, <clears throat> about response to another person at the time. But look, um, here and there in the book, though not often, there are references to the dependencies of the democratic states. Dependencies mean subject races. It is explained that they are not are, go, are, are to go on being dependencies, that the resources are to be pooled among the states of the Union and that their coloured inhabitants will lack the right to vote in Union affairs, except where the tables of statistics bring it out. One would never for a moment guess what numbers of human beings are involved. India, for instance, which contains more inhabitants than the whole of the 15 democracies put together, gets just a page and a half in Mr. Streit's book. And that merely to explain that as merely to explain that as India is not yet fit for self-government, the status quo must continue. And here we one begins to see what would really be happening if Mr. Streit's scheme were put into operation. The British and French empires, with their 600 million disenfranchised human beings, would simply be receiving fresh police forces. The huge strength of the USA would be behind the robbery of India and Africa. Mr. Streit is letting cats out of bags, but all phrases like peace block, peace front, etc. contain some such implication. All imply a tightening up of the existing structure. The unspoken clause is always not counting niggers. For how can we make a firm stand against Hitler if we are simultaneously weakening ourselves at home? In other words, how can we fight fascism except by bolstering up a far vaster injustice? Now, that's the same geopolitics at play in, in Ukraine and in Africa and, and, and the whole argument about hydrocarbons. Right? It, 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 it really hasn't changed. Um, what was the other? Oh, um, God, what's the guy's? I'm not sure. Um, I'll tell you that Orwell response. Oh, boy, God. Oh, don't do this to me. What's happened there? Burnham, that's it. Response to Mr. Burnham, that's what it is. Right. Mr. Burnham Orwell. Walden 2, that's worth reading. It's uh, B.F. Skinner's novel. What's it called again? Just have a look at this here now. Right. What, what's the novel called again? Walden 2. Warden? Walden? So you yeah. told me that. I have told you about it before. It's a really good thing. Right, my Orwell's response to... Ah, oh, here we are. Right, OK. Uh, so it is all well, right? All the hit actually written to all well, Mr. Burnham. Oh, Richard Moore. Oh, wow, that's a throwback. That's to September two thousand and four. I find Burnham. What the hell is that? Oh, there we are. Second thoughts on James Burnham. There we are. That's the one. Quite. Right, this is August the 25th, 2019. Second thoughts on James Burnham, George Orwell. Uh, it's just, uh, 
Right, James Burnham's book, The Managerial Revolution, made a considerable stir both in the United States and in this country at the time when it was published. And its main thesis has been so much discussed that a detailed exposition of it is hardly necessary. Obviously it is today. As shortly as I can summarise it, the thesis is this. Capitalism is disappearing, but socialism is not placing it. What is now arising is a new kind of planned centralised society, which will be neither capitalist nor, in any accepted sense of the word, democratic. The rulers of this new society will be the people who effectively control the means of production. That is, business executives, technicians, bureaucrats and soldiers lumped together by Burnham under the name of managers. These people will eliminate the old capitalist class, crush the working class and so organise society that all power and economic privilege will remain in their own hands. Private property rights will be abolished, but common ownership will not be established. The new managerial societies will not consist of a patchwork of small independent states, but of great super states grouped round the main industrial centres in Europe, Asia and America. These super states will fight among themselves for possession of the remaining uncaptured portions of the earth, but will probably be unable to conquer one another completely. Internally, each society will be hierarchical with an aristocracy of talent at the top and a mass of semi slaves at the bottom. You see, now, this managerial revolution is thought to be the inspiration for Orwell writing 1984, right? Um, but that that paragraph there is describing today. So Huxley's response to Orwell when Orwell wrote to him about Brave New World or vice versa uh, is an interesting read. And, and, and so this, this idea, oh, is it, is it Brave New World we're entering into? Is it 1984? Well, this is, the, this is the answer here. It's 1984 for the plebs and Brave New World for the managerial classes um, and you can't cope with the degree of cognitive dis dissonance of the ensuing slavery if you're in that managerial class without your soma you've got to take your soma so that's you know uh, so <clears throat> criticism of um uh russell brand i don't know how he's going to cope because obviously he's clean now he, he's stopped taking um so it, it uh ha ha how is someone like him who's obviously fitted for the brave new world but how is he going to survive without the soma you know may, is yoga going to cut it for russell i don't know um but well, he's um, been clean for a while so you, what are you saying that if he tries to stay clean whilst having his brain work we've got a problem no well I, I, i've been flippant really but but um sure uh it's it, it it's it isn't a binary brave new world or 1984 they're both part of the same system and so it's like it's, so it's not a binary right two questions you know are we running out of oil no we are well, aren't is it wise to use as much oil or to have such a dependency on oil um perhaps not but they're two quite distinct and separate questions but if you inflate them or conflate them rather, um, you don't get to the sorts of answers that really are possible. And, and so at this point in time, this moment of flux in, in, in the heat of the paradigm shift, um, this is where you need to get your you need to get your suggestions into the suggestion box. Um, and the suggestion box is kind of the Internet. But the trouble is with the internet, it's designed just to have you singing to the choir. Um, and of course, all the choir, the, the choir fancies that it, that it knows all the songs, you know, um, to the extent. <coughs> um, I, I, well, anyway, I. It, yeah. Um, anyway, I did a whole blog about this Burnham business, um, but that. It's really this. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just put the link in our chat here now because it's it's this uh, this is where it came from. Um, so this is a, a Richard Moore article in September 2014. Mind control and conspiracy theory meme echoes of George Orwell and Aldous Huxley. 
Now, Richard Moore wrote the book Escape in the Ma Ma Matrix or How to Escape the Matrix, which is a very good book. Um, put that in here, look, there you go. Um, that one there. So that's out of this blog here. Well, one thing I find quite interesting about um, I'm just looking up Burnham because I'd never heard of Burnham until you told me about him today. Um, mm -hmm. There's a there's an article from 2011 which is in the Review of International Studies and refers to James Burnham as being the first ever neoconservative. Mm. Well, it, it says it says. Um, the first neoconservative, James Burnham and the Origins of a Movement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's by somebody called Binoy Campmark is the person who's written that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, these are the sorts of people that, that it's worth sort of digging out from the memory hole because, you know, this is the this is. This is the good stuff. All these discussions we're having at the moment, we've, we've had before in the 1930s. Um, so like this, 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 um, this social credit thing, the Dork from Cork, Cork uh, recommended this, but, but this is a social credit series of cartoons, which are wonderful. Here's one. This is just explaining. You mean, you mean from, from, you mean from, um, from the 30s, the 20s? Uh, Major Douglas, yeah. There's yeah. a whole series of cartoons that came out in, in the summer of 2020. Very well done, very well produced. Um, and uh, uh, the dog from Cork, he's a guy called Keith Kinnanen. He used to comment on, 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 on Gollum X1V going back. Um, and and, and he, he's, on, he's on Twitter quite a lot. Um, Anyway, I'm not, you know, I, it, it, it's, I, I think he's on to something. Like I think, I think Wes Freeberg, or I, I also met Wes on the Gollum blog. Um, he's on to something with his, uh, his, his uh, quanta, his, 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 his scientific unit of currency idea to get some sort of idea of honest money. So my blog this morning is really this conversation with Wes Keith Cannon and the dog from Cork and me and melding those into this current um, oven ready solution to a paradigm shift, which is in fact a controlled demolition that's going on at the moment. OK, and then looking at who, the rascals who, who, who fancy themselves the commissars of, of, of the oven rate ready solution. Or, or invested in gold like Martinson or whatever. They've got a dog in the fight in terms of they're arguing for solutions which they've already hedged against or taken positions on. I mean, I did a blog the other day. Uh, uh, um, Monbiot was criticising um, Russell Brand. So sort of saying, oh, he's, he, 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 he's doing alt right wrong think <laughs> to... to uh, um, uh, just to get clicks, to get money, and and, and he, he, he he published his register of in, interests. I saw his interest. He sold his house last March, and I sort of said, "Well, he's obviously short in the residential market, you know." So here he is, all these terrible money grubbing things and all the rest of it, and he's Can doing something. You know, when he when when he when he said he'd sold his house. So twenty years ago, George Monbiot lived around Oxford, then. 10 years ago something like that he was living in wales i think he was I, living I, in... I, I think he's still out that way in pembrokeshire or whatever and like i said i i i don't i haven't got any time for george monbiot but i don't wish him any ill will i i, I you know i i, I anyway I, I i i um but he sorry he, yeah, he yeah, does I'm have a pop yeah. of people that don't agree with him you know and 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 and, and um uh Put it this way: I'd rather go out for for lunch with Russell Brand than George Montbiot. I think it would be much, it would be better fun and probably more informative in many ways. But you know, that's just a person. Yeah, I mean, taste. I was disappointed. I've had some contact with George Montbiot over the years. Uh, obviously, it's less and less. I think the last time was 
last time he sent me something, I mean, I might have got a thanks for sending him something, but um, last time he appeared to pay any attention to anything I was saying was when I told him I noticed that Tony Blair was going to the House of Commons to talk about Libya. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, we spoke a little bit when I actually asked him straight up in front of a friend on the phone. I said to him, do you have to follow instructions when you write your own? The the person he reminds me of, okay, is um, David Aronovich, who I really like. I used to read his column in The Times, you know, going back years. Mm. And uh, I still like him, even though he carries water. The, you know, I mean, there's the he wrote the book about conspiracy theorists and stuff like that, Aronovich, if you remember. Um, yeah. But I, I really like him. I mean, I, I you know, I, like if he rang up today and said, you fancy lunch, I'd take him out to lunch in, you know, at the drop of a hat because I, I okay. really like him. Even though he and I obviously are on different sides of some sort of political divide, and maybe we're not, I don't know. But, but Monbiot, I'm just not interested. I mean, I, I, I think he's a really stale, very conventional, um, book learned um, prefect. I mean, he, 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 he's pretty much everything I despise intellectually. You know, well, I've so got to say this: it doesn't say work this. hard. Some, some of the stuff that he did 20 years ago is good. You know, he, he had he, his weekly column. 20 years ago, he put some fucking brilliant stuff out. Um, very, very good. He did a book called Captive State. Well, well, you'll need to send me some then and I have to read it because I'm obviously doing him a, di- a, 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 a disservice. But I, I, I you know, if, if there's something of his you recommend, I'd definitely give it a read. Yeah, I mean, I, he's changed. He, he's he changed had a spat with way. Chomsky about the, um, uh, you know, the French academic that, that, Chomsky wrote the forward of his book. I, I, I think Monbiot got involved in that as well. Monbiot got involved in that spat, as did Sam Harris. Uh, and, and I just lumped them in together. I mean, I haven't got any time for Sam Harris either. OK, I don't know who he is. Um, he's one of the. Um, he, he, he's one of the um, Dawkins God Squad. You know, they, they they have a religious brief in they're not being a god. Anti god. <laughs> Anti god. They're kind of like hard determinists, I think I would say. But yeah. Okay. There is definitely god. I've proven that there is no god. That vibe. Oh well. I, I um. Who are we talking about? Sam Harris. Well, Dawkins. Dawkins. He's he's. He suggests that he has proof that there is no God, you know. Well, that's an interesting, uh, that's a, (laughs) how how can you disprove a faith-based abstract? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that he, he, I'm not saying that I've heard him say that he has proof that there is no God, but the way that he keeps going on about it, anyway. um, I do, I, 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 I mean, I. He was very vocal on Brexit, okay, and I think. Was he? What uh, did he say? Oh God, what a terrible idea it all was, and all the rest of it. I mean, basically, they, these people are authoritarian fascists. That that's what they are. Monbio as well. You know, they want to tell everybody else what to do. You know, they, they, it, it's it. They are. Really obnoxious people to 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 my lights. I I find them obnoxious. I I want nothing to do with them. I do have sympathy for, um, uh, uh, in this, I have to say this. I do have a lot of sympathy for a little a little Hitler, in a sense. In that, <laughs> in that, I have I have probably <laughs> been one, and I did not realise. What well, jobs were- you know, I can't do that, mate. More than my job's worth. No, no, I don't mean like that at all. Um, but I mean, you know, like my blogging and everything, a lot of that was just saying, right, this is how it should be in a way, in a way, not always, but, you know, pointing the finger <laughs> and basically saying, you know, this is oh, wrong, this is wrong. Actually, having a view on ha- the world you want to live in, I mean, that's a perfectly natural thing. I mean, it's just actually believing that 
that that your way is the right way for everybody else that that's kind of suspect <laughs> yeah and, and perhaps a little unnatural i would say you know to you know to uh, it, it's Yeah, the little Hitler bit comes when you think, right, OK, well, my way is obviously better and I'm going to force it on everybody else. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. That, well, that's I think I think, you know, the fact, the fact that there was a referendum that had such a big that was that they, they, they felt like everyone ought to feel included in that whole question and everything like that, you know, even more than an election, you could just sort of. If they hadn't done that, then people wouldn't have got so excited, uh, et cetera. But anyway. I am extremely glad that you have probably for the millionth time mentioned the Orwell, but um, this time I feel like my ability to take in information is a bit different and I've actually paid some attention. So the fact that Burnham exists is... Well, and don't forget, in, in terms of Chester Bellock and, you know, uh, Notting Hills, Napoleon, all that, you know, Chesterton, mm. Cheston's Gate, that's a good one. Uh, but um, the servile state, I mean, all of that stuff, you know, distributism, Major Douglas, I mean, you know, you know Keynes and his, his sort of like the consequences of the war and all of that sort of thing, or, or Churchill's letter to the Treasury about coming off the gold standard, all of that, it's all of a piece. But, you know, we've we've had the rehearsal for this. We've had the, rever the re rehearsal for this. And, 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 and with this sort of binary oh, well, it, it's the capitalists, it's the socialists, it's the left, it's the right, which which, which was something that, 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 that Monbiot was saying in his little attack on uh, Brand the other day, never trust anyone that says they don't believe in left and right, you know, I mean, it, it, it's... Did um, he say that? Did he say that? Oh, yes! Yeah, he did say that. Um, hmm. But, but you see... That's a bit difficult for uh, me. That's a bit difficult for me, because having always been, or having always felt like I was a bit you know, well, a lot more on the left, but then afterwards having hung around the left and having clocked the level of infiltration. No question whatsoever that your your that, that that your your leanings are towards democratic socialism as opposed to so uh, social democracy. I didn't hear that. Uh, I mean, I, I I haven't got a problem with that. You know, I think mine do as well. I mean, I, I you know, I, I think you and I are on the same page with that. It, it's it, it, it's it's kind of what does it mean how do you do it is it is it a panacea that causes i don't think it does you know and and, and so i i mean wales is very different to england they do things differently i mean it's quite interesting as well because they always have a go at the welsh um because they run the national health from the synod um but of course you know the the, the, the welsh nats have a go at the the uh uh the labor people in wales for that as well so i it, it but it, this 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 binary just it's just not very grown up that that's the point um you know so i, I, I well i always end up back with my old mate epictetus and a bit of stoicism and, and, and my great uh influence Charles Saunders Pierce and, and you know the father of American pragmatism and and I think pragmatism more than anything is, is, is the antidote to stale old left right binary thinking I mean I you know I I, I, I um but hey there you go that's uh well I, I really I really like the fact that when I looked up this guy James Burnham. There's a load of stuff. This guy's prolific. Have you ever read anything mm. by him? Yeah, but there are um, loads of people. I mean, like the other one is um, Henry George. He was the most famous man in the world, uh, uh, the fin de siècle, you know. So um, in, 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 in the late 1800s, uh, uh, early 20th century, so the eight, late 1900s, early 20th century, the 21st century, so the late 19th, early 20th century. He, he was um, the most famous man in the world, progress and poverty, you know. And it, so well, again, you know, know how, no, I only know of Henry George because of you. I know almost fuck all about him. But did I tell you the one thing I did find out about him? Um, do you know who funded him? 
Do I know who Frank? He was a newspaper guy. He, he owned his own newspaper. Henry George. Pardon? Henry George. You broke out again. Broke. Henry George. Henry George, yeah. No, it was... I heard that Henry George was, for some period anyway, funded by Silas Burroughs, um, the guy who created what became The Welcome and Glaxo and everything like that. Apparently this guy was American and he was okay. a good guy. Well, I, I, I don't know that. Um, and maybe he was. But, 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 it's just but, a factory. Just a factory. He, he, he was a very successful publisher, published a newspaper and all the rest of it. And, and, and ah. was, you know, he, he was a social media personality of the day for what passed as one back then. When, yeah. when of course, you, that, that you, there would be three or four editions of a paper a day. A bit like in London yeah. with the evening standard, you know, you get the morning, the lunchtime, the evening editions or whatever. Uh, but, you know, back in those days as well, the internet or email was, was a postal service that would do six or seven deliveries a day. Right. You know, and everybody was... If, what was the name of George's paper? Do you know? Oh, I, I honestly can't remember. I, 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 I've read Progress and Poverty, but I'm, I'm no great expert. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I might mean, be easy enough to look it up. Yeah, and I've got <laughs> another question. I've got another question. You've read quite a bit about anarchism, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking I need to learn a bit more about it because I really don't know very much. Um, well, you're quite fortunate. You'll be able to read a lot of the original stuff in the original French, uh, Bakunin and uh, Proudhon. Well, I was going to um, say, have you, have you ever heard of a guy called Hopkins. Jean Grave? G-R-A-V-E-S. No. Apparently, he, he did a lot of publishing in anarchism and knew all of those guys at that time. Mm. Um, hmm. Well, Roger, I think I'll let you carry on doing what you're doing. I'll give you some sort of an update probably tomorrow or tonight on. Um... What's that? Cool. Well, good talk. Yeah, have a good day. I'm going to go and grab another cup of coffee. Cheers, Cheers. Bye. Cheers, Red. Take care. Bye.